let's hop into it. So we have another open space fireside chat. Uh, we're here today with Arch Sturkin from Comfort Systems. And before I pass the microphone over to Art to tell us more about himself and Comfort Systems, want to give a quick introduction of Open Space. Uh, my name's Josh. I oversee the trades team here at Open Space. And Open Space has been a uh, company that started, been around for a few years now. We started in 2017. We're an automated reality capture solution. Uh, so think 360 camera goes on a hard hat, uh, click your starting point on a plan and simply walk in. What Open Space does is automatically capture a 360 image every half a second. And Art's gonna actually today show you uh, one of his projects so you could see what that end product look like uh, looks like. Um, you know, we've we've uh, captured over 15 billion square feet of space across the world. We're in 91 different countries and comfort systems uh, has been one of, if not our best uh, uh, customers. I, I had the opportunity to work with Art almost two years ago, and here we are today. So it's kind of a full circle thing, and it's exciting to see, and uh, excited to be here today with you, Art. Hand it over. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, I think we've, uh, it's probably almost two years today. Uh, yeah. Exactly. When, when you and I started talking about this, and we had a lot of uh, trials to test it out a little bit. So it's been exciting to see this is we probably run in our first real full project coming up here. Um, but uh, my myself, I, I've been with the comfort systems for about four years. I'm the pre-construction manager. I oversee the prefabrication, the pre-planning. We set up all the jobs prior to get them off the ground. I oversee the VDC team. Um, so that was really in the engineering group all kind of report to me. Um, so we're trying to get all the, as I see in open space back in the day, this kind of tied into what we were doing, the 3D model, the BIM. I think what really caught my eye back in the day was the BIM, the BIM model versus the actual reality to be able yeah, to see yeah. that side by side was pretty exciting. So as far as comfort systems, we are um, all over the U.S., Right now, I'm part of the Comfort System Southwest, mm -hmm. and we have Arizona, um, mainly in the Phoenix area, Tucson area, and then New Mexico. So we have the Southwest side of things. I think Comfort Systems itself has 35 operating companies throughout the U.S., about 140 different, different division groups from mm -hmm. MEP side of things. Um, for our group here, we do a lot of large commercial buildings, warehouse hospitals mm -hmm. um, right now i think we're doing a big uh, warehouse out in uh, the east valley and then we got quite a few jobs we got some in tucson some bigger jobs going in tucson and some with the casinos so it's it's a wide variety of things that we do trying to master our skill in, in a certain line of work um, as far as uh, i mean that's comfort systems as a whole mm -hmm. um, as far yeah, as uh, yeah. go ahead well, it's, it, it's, it's funny. Like I, I, re I really do think this is like two years to the day since we last spoke or, or the, since we had originally, you know, you know, had, had that conversation about getting started. What was it about reality capture? Like what got you into reality capture? Cause it's starting to be kind of a, a, a space and technology that trades are really starting to adopt and really evaluate. Like what was it about reality capture that really caught your eye? And why open space? Why well, I'm a, I like technology. And as I saw, I, one of the things kind of adopted at the, in my role is testing out technology prior to seeing if it'd be something that fit our business. Mm -hmm. So uh, stumbled across it. I think Colonial Web, one of our sister companies, uh, I got an email. They were trying it out. And I do believe they're probably using it now too, mm -hmm. but. So I, you know, seeing what they did with it and how we wanted to use it, seeing your guys' demo was actually really, really helpful. But once I saw the fact that you could just walk around the site with the camera on and not have to think, my first thought was from the PE, PM side of things, documentation, because I know they spend hours out there taking photos and documenting progress and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. seeing that and then compared to the BIM model, um, not even if it's a BIM job. I mean, I guess it would be, it'd be beneficial then. But when you saw it compared to the BIM model, you have a lot of documentation that says, here's how we install it. Here's how we built it. This is how it's supposed to be built. 
And if it's not following that, I can quickly go back in history and get screenshots and document, you know, what may need to be the, if there's a change order that has to happen from it or whatever may be the case. And also, I think when it comes to plumbing, once you bury the walls, you sometimes forget is something in there. You can go back in time and see, oh yeah, we got that in there and it's and it's braced properly. You don't have to cut open a wall or something of that nature. So just yeah. from that standpoint, documentation. Um, and then I think there's the track part of it. We did test out the duct work when you guys were piloting that stuff out. So I got a couple, couple examples there to show, but I think now that you guys got the whole MEP side of things, it's able, we're able to actually run it on one of our bigger jobs, about a $16 million job. So it's a, it'll help us out as far as documentation goes. I think the PE might be a little busy, but yeah, yeah. a lot more, a lot, of, a lot more walking. Yeah, no, that's that's an interesting point because that I think that's a challenge a lot of a lot of groups have um, is just documentation, right? The traditional approach is phone, taking a photo and dropping it into your PM software or a shared folder. Like, what what has the feedback been from your team, like your field team, on using open space, and what's what's been like their big difference? And they what have they seen? Now, as far as the field goes, they haven't really been, we haven't gotten too deep into the field actually, as far as like form and supers. I think right now it's, they'll be able to actually look at the model, which would be really nice yeah. for them to have. We have it in Procore also, but uh, the ability for them to actually see where things are at and and fly in against the other trades, I think is going to be very helpful in that regard. As far as the uh, simplicity of it out there, the the PE that walks the sites are, it's super easy. I mean, I guess the, the biggest thing they have to get over is just the camera on the head. <laughs> yeah. The, the comments they have to deal with, but I mean, yeah. you get, you get used to that. I mean, but I, I heard they get used to it when the uh, first big dispute comes up with another trade and, and they get to use their captures to push back. Yeah. And, and then, and then, then they like, get up, people with it. Yeah. They get out there more frequently because we got to get more of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but it's it's uh it's been going pretty good. And the I think the learning curve is actually really easy too. So I think initially when you say, hey, I want a new person to get out there and walk the site, um, when you ask them to do it, it's like a little bit, they think it's gonna be very complicated. It's like, okay, well, it's just load the software is probably the hardest part. Getting on your yeah. phone and and syncing that is probably the hardest part of the job. And then when you get out there, as if it's all dirt, that's a little bit more complicated trying to figure out where you are in the building. Mm -hmm. um because we have a lot of dirt walks on the project that we're at but once That's you figure right. out where you're at you you just start it and walk and you can have conversations as long as you're not out there for eight hours a day walking <laughs> yeah yeah but, can you tell us more about that so are you so we have a few different ways we we train and onboard people at open space you know each customer has a customer success manager which you have wesley and you're very familiar with there's also we we help like one designated person like become train the trainer in the company. Can you tell us more about how Comfort Systems Southwest has, you know, gone about training? Because you mentioned like, it is pretty like self-explanatory and easy, but can you walk us through like what that process looks like to get somebody new and how long does it take for them to just start running with it? So uh, in the beginning, uh, Open Space, you guys were really helpful. We I think we probably had 10 different meetings to get us up to speed as far as different PMs or PEs that were walking the job sites, getting the, the demo cameras and all that stuff set up. Um, but once it was done, I, I'm actually the one that trained the last guy and it took me an hour to train him. I mean, it was, let's get the camera. I mean, that, just getting the camera order, getting that stuff set up. But once we got it all set up on the phone, it, just going out there and showing them how to hit record, just find the door that you're going in and just hit play and then put the phone in your pocket and start walking. Yeah. So I mean it 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 really does not take long to train someone and and your person that has to like I'm I'm training people so that means it's very easy to train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I <laughs> if I can that. if I could train I mean anybody can train them. But I love it. So I want to I want to pivot to another question cuz I always like talking with you about like what your your kind of vision of technology is in construction. And I remember when we first started talking a few years ago um we were talking about like what your vision looks like with open space and integrating with other solutions, but really just kind of, and this is like an open question. It doesn't necessarily have to be about open space, but like, what is, what is your strategy 
for 2023 with comfort systems and like what technology are you guys really looking to to implement and and better improve processes uh, within the company? What what's exciting you this year? So for 23, as far as technology goes, I think we might be looking at a, another like a Trimble scanner of mm -hmm. some sort to be able to get 3D scans of as built and progress of the job so that we can actually go back later on and get detailed and bring them into our model and find out where plumbing and routing. We do a lot of central plants where mm -hmm. we have to retrofit. So we want to be able to scan that central plant and not have to purchase the equipment or rent the equipment to do it or rent yeah, a company. Man. So that that's one of the things, but we also, you know, not, not a lot of people actually look at the safety, but we put safety in the forefront this year mm. a lot. Um, we actually bought a couple Raptor carts. Um, we typically okay. would have to rent those out, but they're for the roof. And when we have to uh, put people on a harness of some sort, um, yeah, we've yeah. gotten in a lot of risky situations where you get on the roof and they, they want us to perform work that's not safe. So you have to rent the carts or whatever may be the case. Um, so we actually purchased a couple of those this year. want to make sure nice. that... We, we and some new harnesses and all some lighter weight the aluminum ones versus the steel ones so there's a lot of stuff in the safety side of things that we're in, uh, including this year so but in 2022 we did purchase a lot of uh, new equipment we got a burning pipe server cutter so we can actually go from our revit models straight to the pipe server cut the pipe so it's more accurate we can actually do a lot of prefab in our shop which actually helps with the scheduling nowadays getting tighter help us meet those timelines that they are putting in front of us. So, mm -hmm. so we got some new equipment there. Procore was a new launch and knowing how yeah. open space actually kind of speaks to Procore was actually part of that decision on when we jumped over to Procore because it's, it's very easy to go back and forth in that one as far as when you do some of your field notes which is something new that we're getting used to using. You'll know, you'll see some field notes in the job that we did too. So, um, so we're just trying to get better, just being really good at what we have in 23. Yeah. So you don't want to keep just grabbing the next piece of technology. I'm not easy to just, uh, it took us a little while to get to using your stuff. So it's, yeah. we're not going to just take the next person that says, Hey, we got the next greatest thing. We have tried some new things and, and, uh, you know, we had some successes and some failures. So, mm -hmm. um, but we keep trying them. We're not going to give up. And the biggest thing really is just the, the workforce that's out there trying mm -hmm. to figure out what technology that we might be able to bring in to help eliminate needing to have more people in the field. So yeah. is there some way we could speed up a process in our building or make sure things are going to fit prior to getting out to the field and find out you have to do a lot of rework where you don't have the manpower to do that. So um, that's one of the, the biggest focuses for us is just try to look at technology at how we can actually help the field speed up their yeah, install yeah. process. That's probably the biggest challenge I continue to hear is that labor shortage. Um, and, and where, where can companies do more with less and open space has been um, at the front of that conversation of a PM, especially for trade, right? With the previous group we were talking with, their PMs are overseeing 12 different projects. So how do you get to those 12 different projects within, you know, in, in a, con a considerable amount of time. Um, can you tell us, has open space like helped with that efficiency process, being able to do more with less? Um, do you find that your teams are opting to virtually travel to a site if they can, so they can cover three different sites in a day instead of physically traveling to one? What has that experience been like? I think the it hasn't we haven't had that many jobs posted yet because we typically will do them on the bigger jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as virtually watching, if you have a bigger job, you have one PM that kind of oversees it with a bunch of little jobs, and and we won't uh, have all those little jobs in open space at this point. So there's not a need to virtually watch that one as much. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as I think the documentation side of things, being able to speed that up, the PE can spend more time working versus taking photos or trying to track down stuff they can they can walk really fast and remember a note quickly jot a note down inside of the field mm -hmm. notes and then go back to that later on and say okay now i gotta go ahead and write this change order and not try to remember what everything you did so i think in that regard as they get used to using the tool it's going to speed up their ability to get that's just going to be a task that they don't have to think about yeah 
I mean, it's it, if I walk the site, I got documentation, so I can always go back later on and go, okay, what area was this in? I can go and take a couple screenshots and then type up my email and be done with it. Yeah, exactly. So on that point, do you want to bring up one of your projects and show us? Yeah, I could, I could definitely that do that. Like? Let me see here. Too many screens. Got to figure out which one it is. <laughs> I feel you. Got a lot All right, of so this, this is one of our jobs right here. And this is the current one that we're going to have our uh, track. So one of the things is the setup of this is actually relatively simple. So you can kind of, I can just look at that real quick. It's, I think you guys did a good job of making it pretty simple and for uh, entry level users for that matter, in my mind. Yeah, so um, what what is like when you, so just walking through this, to set up a project, what do you do? Like, can you, can you walk us through that? Yeah, so, Really, it, it starts at the beginning. You can just come into your jobs and you create a new, you can create a new project from here. Mm -hmm. um, but once you actually create the new project, you can come in here and actually it's very simple. It typically brings you to this, uh, once I get the screen up, it brings you to this screen where you just go ahead and type the company information, the location, the project yeah, starts. Yeah. Um, then you just create your floor plans. And typically what I would do is just grab the architectural floor plan, try to get all of it on one sheet, the simpler. It, if you have multiple sheets, it just makes you have to change your areas when you walk the job site. So I try to get it all on one sheet. So when you walk a level, you just say I start and then you can just walk the level however you want to walk the level. Um, if you break it up into areas, then you have to know when you cross the area that you have to start a new sheet. And it, mm -hmm. I think it creates a little bit, a couple more extra steps. But yeah, you just upload your floor plans. It's pretty simple. Um, we this one it just has underground level one and roof. So we we loaded those three um, field notes. You did typically just can pick out what you want your field note categories to be, or create your own categories. Mm -hmm. um, so you can customize this. I typically don't change it. So generally, when you when you start a project and you're creating it, how long does it take you to create a new project in open space? I think the biggest, uh, the longest part is just trying to figure out what floor plans to use. <laughs> yeah. Setting it up is actually really fast. Um, the uploading the model, as long as you got to, if it's a model, uh, updating it. Um, mm -hmm. This is actually a new feature that you guys added, which was kind of neat. We stumbled across this, but align floors. Yeah. So that, that you can realign them if things aren't lined up properly, or if you want to get your elevation different. Yeah. Um, but once you upload the model, then I, it takes a day or so. And then I think you guys sync it, get the coordinates there. Um, and then this is the new one track. I haven't even really poked around in this one because it just popped up today. So well, when we so when you when you get a project created, can you can you show us like what a capture looks like? Yeah. Like the floor plan and uh the walking path and what that like give us like a, a day in, in the life of a PE who, who goes out, you set the project up, it took you, you know, a few minutes adding in those four plans. What is a PE with the camera going to do now in the field? So from the field standpoint, it's on their iPhone or Samsung or whatever phone they have. You can pull up, it'll be a view very similar to what's on the screen on their phone. You just pick what floor you're going to be on. If you're going to be on level one. And then on your phone, if you're going to start right there, you just tap the phone and say, start recording. Mm -hmm. And then basically the camera is working. The camera's on their hard hat and you can actually walk the site. Um, and you see the pattern here is because he's going around the perimeter of the concrete right now. But um, you just put the camera on. You can actually stop, have conversations with people if you need to. You don't have to worry about stopping the recording. The only time you have to worry is if you if your battery were to go dead for some reason, if you really stop and talk to everybody around. <laughs> yeah. You probably got about three hours to record something. So if you're taking more than that, that means you really stopped a lot. Um, but you can so always- Once he finishes this recording, how yeah, long does it typically take for you to receive this, what we're seeing currently in the office? Um, for the office, depends on how quick it gets back to the to the Wi-Fi and hits upload. Um, you can you could do it off the phone, but it takes a little bit longer off of the, the 5G or the 4G, whatever network mm -hmm. you're on. 
but um, typically I'll see an email like the next day to saying your captures are ready to be viewed. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, I don't, I don't even know when he walks. I'll, I see a new email and then I can pop in here and see, you know, when he walked it. Um, but you can kind of see like the history of the walks, what days he walked them. Yeah. So over time, we didn't have much activity, so you didn't have much going on. This is probably when I trained him. Yeah. Yeah. So what for the for the uh, attendees? What essentially what you're seeing here is the end product after they walk. The person in the field who took the capture goes to upload it, and then Art with this green line is able to see exactly where on the 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 site plan or floor plan that person walks, so he can easily hop to a certain area and view that in this Google street like view environment. And at the bottom here where it says March 27th, like all of these walks are timestamped. And then you can, yeah, do you want to show them like if if something was to happen on the six, what that looks like to be able to jump back in time. So when you first get these captures, like what is your first, like what do you typically look for? What do you do? I mean, I just kind of walk to see where they're at in progress. I mean, the big, the the neat part of it is to be able to just, this is the part that really sold me back in the day, but being able to see the model in comparison to um, where you are standing. Yeah. Um, and then you can pick anywhere in the building following the green path, and it'll show you where you're at and what should be there. And you can turn on and off you know, your, um, your layers. So if we wanted to actually just hide the architectural side of things, then you can quickly see, I kind of closed it accidentally. From a mechanical perspective, can you, can you walk the attendees through like what the value is for you for being able to, to have this side by side and like, where do you typically see yourself using it and why? So the biggest the, the biggest advantage to me is typically when um, someone says, they might mention that we uh, are having a conflict in the field. And before we have them actually allow, want them to actually change anything in the field, mm -hmm. we can quickly see if they're, they're installed according to the model. And then if not, then we can actually go through the model and see, is there a better route before you just decide to move something? Mm -hmm. Is there a better route you can go? And then if there's a need for a change order from them, we can start actually doing screenshots, sending it over to the GC saying, hey, here's a, here's a challenge we have here. It looks like, you know, whatever structure was off by two feet or whatever may be the case. And then you had to route around it. I mean, this is a lot of elbows that we're going to have to add to get around this change. How do you want us to handle it? before? in the past it would have just been taken care of and you might lose that opportunity to capture a change order from it or you know just lost revenue whatever may be the case yeah yeah that's interesting so that that's a bit that's a that's a i think big point right there and and i think one of the challenges we you know we hear and i'm sure you hear as well is just a, a lack of coordination with you know with you and other trades and then even the gc like with using this and this kind of example you just showed have you seen an improvement in the relationships and the conversations with your gcs or or other trades as well on the project what has that experience been like i don't know if if we've we've haven't really pulled the gc into our our open space yet mm -hmm. um because we do a lot of modeling with them we we do refer to back to the models a lot um but as far as open space, we haven't really invited them into that yet. Um, it's a, it's definitely an opportunity down the road for us to be able to do that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, but like, so, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say it's pretty. You can like zoom into an area. You can see like this compared to that. It's you know you can kind of just look around to see, make sure things are going as planned. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty neat in that regards. Is your you can, field team using using this BIM side by side in the field, like on any type of tablet? Right now, they're actually they do a lot in Procore. They fly the models in Procore right now because yep. it's it's readily available. They can download it 
without having to be on the web. Um, the, a lot of the area like out in these, this is old farmland. So the technology as far as Wi-Fi or the 5G is not that great. So you don't want to stream too much out there. That makes so sense. Yeah. On Procore, you can download the model. So that's the advantage. So if there's a way to download this and then view it, it might come in uh, handy down the road. Well, I think kind of circling back up to something you said earlier, one of the benefits is in, in you know, the open space Procore integration. So it sounds like the team, you know, your team is is looking at the model in the field with Procore. And then you mentioned earlier, they're using field notes. So you're looking and, and soon to adopt, like, what does that process look like? And so right now the, uh, the field uh, notes uh, seem to come a lot more from the PE. So he'll walk the job site to like, I think, I don't know what this one says, but he did a field note in this area. So he, he stopped here, captured some stuff. Um, there's one member on email alerts, so I don't know. He probably had to remember something on this one. He didn't write too much in the notes itself, but on some other ones, you can kind of see. Click the wrong one. Where'd it go? So you can see the, all the field notes that he's captured. So can I do you, yeah, can you click click one of those again? That uh I like that priority one. So for reference for the attendees, what, what we're looking at here is what we call field note. And, and if you saw in the other example, you know, you could see that that person in the field taking a photo with their phone. And in the middle of a capture, it automatically captures and locates that photo onto the floor plan automatically. Um, so as Art was saying, it, you know, in time savings, you know, they could just capture that real quick, keep walking and, and come back later and add those notes. But what does it look like when they want to push that into Procore? Do you have yours currently integrated? Um, I have not, but I didn't, haven't used it before. So it's like, but you could see the integration. So this is a BIM 360. That's the Procore one. I think that's plan grid. Uh, yeah, that's a 360. So but so you can link it to an existing RFI, link to an observation, link it to a, so your choices are here. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I, I don't want to do this for them, but I could click yeah. link to an RFI and it would run over Procore. The big thing is you got to remember to log in using your Procore um, credentials versus open space. So it yeah. syncs. And that was part of the, uh, the integration when you go in here into the settings, didn't really cover that very much, but you can you ha you have your integrations for your uh, different tools you can actually integrate with. Mm -hmm. So when you log in, it'll ask you, do you want to log in using your Procore one or your Plan Grid or your BIM 360? So then once you do that, it's going to integrate with that specific one. What would you say the biggest value is of the field notes that you've seen so far? I think right now it's just a matter of not forgetting something. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you walk around in the field a lot with your phone, but you don't always have a piece of paper or something to write down. I mean, you could take notes on your phone, but this is just super, super fast. So, what a what, and then so kind of segueing because you you touched on it a bit. Track so track is and just kind of an introduction of of what track is. So track is a is essentially an add on feature. Uh, within open space. So what, you know, for the attendees, what everything you've seen before with the capturing process, the side-by-side -side of the BIM, that's what we call our, our capture uh, feature, which is our core product. And track is essentially, uh, we've taught the AI to be able to, to look at your photos. And essentially, you can see on the, the right side of the screen here, ductwork, HVAC finishes, mechanical piping. Our AI can has learned what those materials are. And as Art and his team are installing those, the AI is able to automatically automatically give you production complete. Um, so Art, like tell us why you wanted to add on, you know, track, where do you see the value, what your experience has been like so far? So I think the the biggest the area that we want to capture obviously is to see the progress, the 
percentage complete is one of the biggest struggles is, you know, you, you do a lot of jobs and you're, you're taking a stab based off of an area. Oh, we probably 33% complete, mm -hmm. but this actually gives you a, a better idea of where you really, really are in comparison. Um, so for example, I mean, we can look, you can turn on, we don't have any ductwork installed yet because uh, you saw from the photos, it's still coming up with steel. Yep. But you can turn on and off the uh, the all the ductwork that needs to be installed. You could zoom in, mm -hmm. uh, and then you could turn that off. You can see what finishes as far as like the grills and the you know diffusers and all that stuff. So those are those are going to be counted. And then your mechanical piping, where that's going to be, mm -hmm. you have your specific levels. So we could go to the roof. We don't have any roof capture, so we can't compare it to anything. Um, obviously because the roof's not there yet. Yep. But eventually we'll be getting up on the roof and doing the same walks um, so that we can capture, we got a lot of mechanical pipe on this roof. So we're gonna be able to capture that. And it, it and I could show you one of our other ones, that the one that we did the pilot on. So you can kind of see here, the 78% of the ductwork was installed. You can kind of, if you turned it off, you can see what's still remaining. Um, some of the reporting is pretty neat. You can go in and see how much is installed per day. So from the PM standpoint, you can quickly say, okay, you know, what, what happened between here, you might find out that there was a rain delay or there was something that stopped you from doing work, which might give you an idea, an opportunity to say, hey, GC, you caused the delay. Mm -hmm. uh, or something caused a delay. That's why we were here. We need to push the schedule out. So you're not always getting caught with your pants down. You have some documentation that can help you out. Um, then I think there's some more reporting that I have to learn as, as we get into the next, next uh, go round. But I think that's the biggest thing is to be able to see what percentage real time, what percentage complete we are. Where, where do you find yourself the most when you're, when you're analyzing track what are what are some of the the features? Because there's three different areas you can really look at. Like what where do you where are you living the most when the data? Comes I'm always up? in the images, um, for my standpoint because I I'm I'm more of a the front yeah. end of the job. Yeah. I you get involved in the in in the uh, BIM world is is primary function then prefab and pre planning. So a lot of the PMs would be able to use the track so they can actually, ask, you know, when they get into their monthly billings and stuff like that, they can estimate better. Um, so I think that'll be a benefit to them down the road. For the track, have have they given you feedback or have, from your perspective, what has the accuracy been? Well, well this is the first, uh, I think this is the first real go round. So um we just got it started today, so I'll, I, I'll have to get you uh, information on that down the road. Yeah. Um, but everybody's wow. excited. Everybody's excited to see it, so it better be good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I so now as we've kind of touched on all the technical aspects, I wanna I wanna give you the opportunity to get the the product team's ears. You know, you've you've had a handful of conversations with Jess Lamb and Mike Treybold and. They've gotten a lot of your feedback. And after what you've, you know, you've been, you know, with open space for two years now, if you were to ask the product team, you know, hey, this is what, you know, I could really find valuable, what would that feature be? Mm, I wasn't ready for that question. Well, you, now that it's there, <laughs> man, it's who knows? Your 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 recommendation could be could be the next key feature we work on. So if you I think I think if if I were if I were one to say what would probably get more people to want to use it is the figuring out a the the camera side of things. Mm -hmm. So it's more discreet, not so much uh here I come and have everybody run. But that's, that's interesting. A, so like the your your team, your your field team not having that camera just sitting on the helmet and in my mind, it's almost it's it's almost like the police force how they all have now the camera just they, they just wear, mm -hmm. and it's just normal. Then you can get you know more foreman or whoever's on the job site all the time. 
something that they could just turn on and off like okay I, I need to record this area and then you just walk and then there's no there's no hassle you know that's I think the biggest thing is I got to get my you know even though it's not hard it's like I gave my phone out get the camera make sure it's charged you know just having that readily available and not yeah. so here I am in your face with a camera and everybody doesn't want to talk to you <laughs> yeah no yeah no that's interesting and, and it's it's we're our product also is like it, it's it's improving as the cameras improve in a lot of ways we're at the mercies of of the cameras and so in the future who right. knows what the you know 360 camera could be something as simple as like in your in your glasses right and then as you just like you're saying you hit the button and it's starts capturing as you're walking around but that well, you can you, know, you can see that with the uh, this this take this walk you can see the grain granular and this one is this one is the the most expensive camera you guys have and yeah, i mean the, yeah. de the detail is so much greater and that's so, in a difference of a year right because that smcc project was uh one of the first projects you guys trialed us with right? yeah and i think this one was with the uh the lesser camera the the but that's you can cool. definitely see the difference so yeah no it just keeps getting better and better and and as it as the cameras you know evolve our ai and computer vision evolves with it and um it's moving quick it's exciting and i think the only other thing that i can think of from when one of my uh project managers on the vdc side is was trying to set up the the level so when we were in the model it seemed as though um you can just trying to pull it up here so you can you can pick where you are at you know you can you can go down further and we were having like trying to get below the ground is like a really slow but then um not having it remember where you set it and then so he had to go through and to the settings and um he learned how to align the floor mm -hmm. so that was that that actually helped out a lot there but just trying to figure out yeah, how to get yeah. it from the because when you set it up in the 2d view but then you have to come back and realign it in the 3d view because if you hit a corner of the top of the building it sets you up all the way at the roof so then when you when we started flying these models when we first got them you're way high so you had to try to bring yourself down so he figured yeah. out how to realign the floors but and that and is that new new aligned floors helping yeah, I mean, that's when you see me come into the model, that's where I'm at now is on the new aligned floors. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, Art, this has been fun, man. Yeah, I look, uh, look forward to seeing what goes on throughout this project. We got to check back in about uh, nine months and see how it's going. Yeah, you guys have uh, this. This one has track, right? You just got track fully set up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is the first the first one we're actually doing outside of a pilot. It's exciting. So yeah, I'm excited too. I think I, I think the underground was the only thing I think you're not quite ready to capture. So I think that might be something I know your team's working on. I just got an email back on that. So for for track, right? Yeah, yeah, for track. Yeah. Did you guys capture the underground of, of this with just capture? Uh, we tried, but you know it's it's a little bit harder to get the uh, the the pipe at the right time. Is that because your guys just couldn't get to that area, like physically get to that area? Well, I mean, if you walk it and you walk, unless you walk over the pipe, you can't see the pipe. Oh, gotcha. Because it's in the trench. Yep. So I think I, I think that might be the most complicated part of it because you also then have to walk around the only the areas that you can actually walk around. Well, you know, you know what could have helped and and for future projects and and Wesley can talk about this more with you is we're we we've uh, integrated with drone, a specific drone um, that I think could could have been really helpful in just flying that drone over that area and not having to rely on like humans putting themselves in harm. Yeah, I thought about that, but I wasn't sure what kind of, uh, if you needed a permit, like in this area here, we had an issue with the crane because it was too tall. So they had uh, to, because it was in the airport fly path. Yep. So yep. I don't know what kind of rules you have on those, but yeah, it would be something down the road, especially for underground. Yeah. Yeah. Wesley, Wesley could definitely give you some more details on that. I think it's the Insta360's uh, spear that we now work with. And it's it's been going really well. We've 
recently we're talking with a group doing um, solar work and they're they're deploying. And I, I mean, I know it, it would be a dream of mine, but if I just put the actual model right over top of the actual, so that you almost have a as-built type of scenario. Like overlay the model on the- uh, Onto the actual. I know yeah. we got the over the overlay for the actual floor plan. Yep. But like to be able to see, okay, this pipe is off by four inches. Now you can actually go in and you yeah. could adjust your as built to move our model to match where the pipe actually is and see if we're going to yeah. have any conflicts with that. But that that's probably a lot more on the technology side. But I mean, it's pretty darn <laughs> cool you can do this. So if I'm assuming your team can probably come up with that. Yeah, no, it's it's in the roadmap. It's definitely um, a discussion our team has been having and, and something that our, our VDC team has been working on. Cool. Well, you got anything else for me? No, man. I, I thought this was an awesome conversation. I I I didn't even like mean for this to happen, but like two years, like right on the dot. It's exciting <laughs> we got to do this and come full circle with it. Um and yeah, we we I I'd love to catch up with you in like six to nine months and do this again once you have more data on the track side. Um, yeah, that'd be that'd be good to follow up on that just to see how it goes. It maybe it doesn't yeah. need to be an hour, but because I don't know if I could talk for an hour on <laughs> on the results, but yeah, we yeah. could we could definitely we'll, catch we'll, up. We'll bring in the whole gang next time. We'll bring in Wesley and Cole, and I know those guys can talk. So, but yeah, man, this was fun. I'm glad we did this. Well, awesome. Thanks for the invite. All right, Art. We'll All right, take awesome. care. Bye. Bye.